Hey guys, Princess 3 x and today I'm filming my April Hits and Misses, and um, I know this video is a little bit late, but I have had crazy amounts of work to do, and next week is finals, so I'm like stressing to the max, but I wanted to film this video for you guys because I this is like the largest April Hits and Misses I've ever filmed before, um, so it's going to be a bit long, so I am filming this a little bit differently. I'm going to put over to the side over here or over here somewhere. Um, things that you can click on so you can skip to different sections in the video if you want to. The text will be there for a little while so you can click on them to skip to a certain part or you can just watch the video the whole way through. Um, and I am wearing hair extensions which I will talk about a little bit later in my video but right now we're just going to get started um, and I'm going to stop babbling. So this month I have been crazy obsessed with nail polish. I don't know why or what happened that made me obsessed with it but I've been doing my nails like crazy and repainting them like crazy. So I have seven nail polishes here, I think seven. Yeah, I have seven nail polishes here that I want to show you guys. Um, and all of them are pretty good, but I'll be sort of doing a little review of each. And the first ones are the Wet n Wild Mega Last Salon Nail Color Nail Polishes. And CVS was having a deal on these, um, I think like a week ago, or a week and a half ago, um, that it was two for three, so I went and bought four of them because I bought two and then I fell head over heels for them and then I went back and bought two more. So I have four of them now, so you can see them in here. So the colors that I have, sorry you can hear like nail polish bottles. Um, the colors that I have are 218A, I need a refreshment, and this is what I'm wearing on my nails on my French tips here. So this is a really pretty mint green color and I absolutely love this color and they all have these really wide brushes that have been featured in some polish before. I know the Rimmel, like, lasting finish polishes have brushes like these, and some Sally Hansen ones do as well, so they have that really nice wide brush, which I love the wide brush, some people don't, but I like it a lot, um, even though I have really tiny nails. So there's this one, and then there's 204B Private Viewing, which is a nude color, and I was afraid this was going to be sheer, but it's actually a really opaque nude once you get to around two or three coats. And then I have 206C Undercover, and this is a really nice sort of dusty rose color. Um, it's not too dark, but it is dark enough that it makes a difference. And it's a really nice sort of natural, neutral color for, like, professional settings. So I really love this color. And then the last one is 211B Club Havana. And this is a really bright orange, but it's almost got a sort of pastel tint to it. So I like that this isn't full-blown orange, neon orange, but it is still right on up there. And orange is definitely the color of the year. Um, Pantone has announced it as color of the year, so I was really excited to get this one. So these polishes um, are really big bottles, as you can see, so you get a good amount of product, and they're really cheap, even if you can't find them on sale. Um, and there are a few spring sort of colors in them. I got these two specifically for spring because I love mint polishes. I have like five mint polishes, and I this one caught my eye because it's a lot more blue-toned than a lot of the mint polishes that I have. Um, and then the orange one was actually a request from my sister because she loves orange polishes. Um, and I also thought orange would have a, be a good color to have in nail polishes because, like I mentioned, Pantone announced it as color of the year. So orange is going to be everywhere this season. Um, and so I got these two mostly for spring. And then I got these two because I figured since I got two bright colors, I would get two sort of neutral colors. So the Dusty Rose, like I mentioned, is really professional looking, even though it still gives you um, a nice color to your nails. And then Private Viewing is, of course, just a nude color. This actually comes off a lot more peach orange tinted on the skin, or on my skin at least, um, than it looks in the bottle. So that's a bit of a disappointment, but it's not too crazy. That's what I'm wearing underneath um, the green for my French manicure today. So I love, love, love these polishes. I cannot rave about these enough. I'm actually tempted to go get more of these, but I think my mom would murder me um, because they go on so amazingly. They are super opaque, and they're not streaky, and they're not thick. They're like a mix between watery and thick, so they're not too liquidy or runny or anything, and they go on like butter. It's absolutely amazing. I think that the one I had the most difficulty applying was Undercover, um, and I don't know why that is. It went on a bit thinner than the others, but other than that, it goes on basically the same. There's not that big of a difference. And I can't talk too much about lasting power because 
I wear these under a gel manicure, um, like I've done most of my polishes. So I can't talk about lasting power, but I've heard from others that they last a fairly good amount of time with a normal top coat. So I definitely recommend these. I give these a million stars out of 10. They are absolutely amazing polishes. And if you're looking for some cheap drugstore polishes or cheap polishes or polishes at all, I definitely recommend these because these are totally up to OPI standards. Um, in comparison with my OPI polishes or like any of my higher end polishes, um, these definitely are right on up there with them, if not better than them. So I love these polishes. And then I picked up two of the new L'Oreal Color Riche polishes. These are from their new lines. Um, the first one I got is Club Privé, which is from their trendsetter sort of subcategory. Um, and it's this sort of mint sort of color, and I will um, talk about this a little later. Um, and then I also got Versailles Romance, which is number 310, and this is a peachy nude pink color with a lot of shimmer in it. Um, and this one is from the Hopeless Romance or Hopeless Romantics collection. Um, so I picked up these two because it was originally Club Privé that caught my eye, and then I actually hate the formula for Club Privé. Oops. I hate the formula for Club Privé. It's streaky, it's thick, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. It's a horrible formula. Um, so I tried Versailles Romance. I got Versailles Romance hoping that the formula would change a little bit. And Versailles Romance goes on a little bit easier, but it's still really streaky and weird. Um, I really can't get these to go on right. I got them on, and once they were on, they're beautiful. But it's such a pain getting them on that it's almost not worth it because this goes on really 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 streaky until the last coat and then even then you have to sort of um, play with it a little bit but you can't play with it too much because it's too streaky so I really don't like these polishes at all um, I don't think they're worth it because I think they run about six to eight dollars depending on where you get them compared to the wet and wild ones which run about two to three I think um, so these are definitely not worth it at all. I don't recommend these unless you see a color that they have that is like really special. I still want to get Safari Chic, which is sad because I hate the formula on these so much, but Safari Chic is such a pretty color that I think I'm going to get it anyways. Um, but I just really don't like these at all. And I um, actually picked up Club Privé first and I hated the formula. And then I picked up I Need a Refreshment and I didn't realize until I got home that they were the exact same color. Um, Club Privé is a bit, or Club Privé, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's a French word, um, is a bit darker than I Need a Refreshman, but they're basically the same color. So if you have one, don't get the other. You can tell via camera that they are basically the same exact color, except for the Mega Last goes on so much better than the Color Riche does. So if you had to get one or the other, if you like this color, get the Mega Last if it's available in your area. Do not get the Color Riche because I totally do not recommend these. Like I said, I paid six to eight dollars for these, and I would not really buy them again unless I saw an extraordinary color. Um, which right now, so far as chic, I may or may not be getting. I haven't decided yet. But yeah, I don't really recommend these at all. And last but not least for the humongous nail polish category is the Wet n Wild spoiled collection. Um, these are usually on a different sort of stand and not with the wet and wild colors or at least they aren't where I live. But this one is in Paying with Platinum and I actually didn't pick this out. My mom picked it out for me or she showed me it and I just had to get it at the moment. These are really cheap. I think they're like $1.99 and um, I got this color because I've always wanted one of these duochrome sort of um, pearl green purple colors and I actually really want um, Orly Space Cadet. I absolutely need to get Orly Space Cadet. It is a gorgeous color um, but I've been wanting something like this for a while. Um, however, I am really disappointed with this polish. It is nowhere near near as good as the other Wet n Wild polishes and the formula is so thin and streaky that it's like totally not worth it even putting it on. Um, maybe if I play with it a little more and try to work with it a little more to go on a little bit better, but the brush is wide and the brush is really sort of scraggly. It's not very smooth brush. The other ones you can tell how smooth they are by looking at them, but this one is not smooth and the formula is really watery, so I really don't like this polish at all. I was hoping to love it because the color is really pretty, but even then the color is not extraordinary. It's not anything completely special because it is hard to get on like fully opaque. 
Um, but maybe if I work with it a little more to get a bit, little bit better. But as of right now, this is not looking like a very promising item. Okay, moving on to eyes. Um, I suppose. I really don't have a lot of makeup for eyes this month, but it may seem like it because I went a little crazy and picked up three of the Wet n Wild Color Icon palettes, um, and they look like this, and they are the eight eyeshadow palettes, and I will show you these one by one. I don't know what's wrong with mine because they have been getting like black stuff all over me. I don't know if an eyeshadow broke and just been pouring out everywhere, but I was hoping it didn't mess up my makeup collection or anything. It didn't, but... The first one I have is in Comfort Zone, and this one um, is the neutral one, or I guess one of the neutral ones. I don't know if they have another one. And it looks like this, and it comes with four sort of neutral eyeshadows over here, um, and they do are labeled like Brow Bone, Eyelid, Crease, um, and Definer. And then it has the green side, and once again, you have all of them there, and you can see the black getting on my fingers. Um, and I'm actually wearing the neutral side on my eyes today, if you can tell. Um, I really, 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 really love these. These are great quality. Um, they are a bit powdery, but as long as you like tap off your brush, you won't get any fallout anywhere. Um, and the colors are beautiful and super pigmented. Um, I will have swatches somewhere on this video. But the colors are super pigmented and soft and beautiful. And it's really cheap as well, so it's not wasting if you don't really like the colors. Um, but I definitely recommend this wholeheartedly. This is amazing. Um, and yeah, that's like basically my whole review on the eyeshadow palettes. I definitely recommend these. But I got Comfort Zone. And then I also got Blue Had Me at Hello, which is a super cute name. And this is the blue palette, obviously. And the side here has sort of cool toned blues, or not cool toned blues, all blues are going to be cool toned, but it has the silvers and the really dark navy and then a matte black. And then this side has the sort of brighter, really rich blues and it has a really light sort of aqua color at the top and then a teal blue here, um, a shimmery navy here, and then a sparkly blue black here. Um, and then of course, once again, they're labeled brow bone to definer. And this is also really good for beginners because it shows you on the back different looks you can do with the different eyeshadows as labeled and where to put them. So if you're not very experienced at makeup, this, these are great palettes to get because not only do you get a wide range of sort of finishes to play with um, and a lot of different colors, you also get instructions on different looks to do. Um, so I really like that idea. And... I just really love these eyeshadows because they are so pigmented, but as you can see, some of them have broken in this palette especially. I don't think they've broken in my other ones, but they have broken in these two blues here. Um, like I said, they are really, really, really soft and a bit powdery, so they do break fairly easily. So if you drop them, um, you will get a few chunks taken out. I don't mind too much because they are so cheap, um, but keep that in mind when you're buying them. Okay, then last but not least, I have 736 Petal Pusher, and this is the first one I got. This is the one I love the most because I just am so in love with the colors, especially for spring. And this one is the Purple Pink Palette, and it's gorgeous. I love, love, love this palette. Um, there are, on this side, you have purples, and you have like a sort of pink brow bone color, and I think... Most of these on this side are pearls, except for the last one is shimmery and the brow bone is matte. And then this side you have sort of pinks and darker pink shades, like burgundies down here. Um, and I think, yes, the bottom three are shimmers and the top is a pearl. So this is really pretty as well. Um, and once again, you have the instructions on the back as to how to put it on. And um, I love this color, these colors because they're not too pink that they make you look like you've contracted pink eye, um, which is not cute, but they are pink enough that you can notice. And this color especially is really pretty. I don't really like pearl colors too much, but I love this color here because it is really, really, really pretty. I wouldn't use that on my brow bone because I think it's a little too pink to be used on a brow bone um, for anybody. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that for a brow bone color, but... It's pretty to have in a palette, so it's, once again, this is really nice to experiment with. And they do come with a little shadow applicator. I don't use it, of course, but it's in there if you need to do touch-ups or if you don't have any brushes and you want to use that. I'm sure they're perfectly fine. And next is my Urban Decay Naked 2 palette, which I've already done one tutorial with and loads more to come. This was a gift from um, 
surprise oh aunt style um or candace my best friend and she got this for me for my birthday you can see it in my birthday haul if you want to hear me talking about it a little more or my updated everyday makeup tutorial which you can see i will link that down below um and it does have a little brush here. I have been using this basically every day, but I haven't been using it, you know, for my whole entire look every day. As mentioned, I've been using, like, the comfort zone on my eyes as well. But the colors that I use the most are the sort of neutral ones. Um, or not, not neutral ones, you know what I'm trying to say. The ones that are sort of easy to use. Foxy I've been using as my everyday highlight color now. Um, Beauty Call is the one that I'm wearing on my inner corner. It's the one that I wear on my inner corner every single day. Um, Tease I use as a crease color most of the time because it is a really good transition color between a sort of shimmery crease color and then to your brow bone. It fades out really great. Um, and then Suspect I love putting on my lid and sneak bite underneath my lash line, which you can see in my updated everyday makeup tutorial once again. Um, it has this humongous mirror, which I'm trying not to blind you with, but anyways, I love this palette. The eyeshadows are amazing, um, as everyone has raved about, and it's definitely worth it. I don't think, I still don't think I could have bought it for myself just because I can never bring myself to spend a lot, a lot of money on something unless I'm sure that I will love it. So I wasn't sure how much I would use this, but I love it now, and I know that I'd use it basically every day so it's totally worth the money for me at least um, and I am a little tempted to buy a naked one but I don't think I will anytime soon maybe during the summer at some point um, because the colors in that one are a little bit better for fall but I love this palette um, it's amazing I really can't read about it enough once again there'll be a few swatches somewhere on this video um, I will do full swatches of this if you guys want me to um, just let me know and I will take pictures and post them on my blog which is dot blogspot.com or .wordpress.com. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, but I will put that in the down bar. I do have a new fashion blog and that's what it is. But anyways, I use this all the time and I totally recommend it if you have the money to spend. If you don't have the money to spend, the NYX Nude on Nude palette, which uh, used to be my favorite palette, um, is also pretty good for a lot of neutrals and the Comfort Zone palette is really great for a lot of neutrals. So there's still a lot of alternatives out there for neutral palettes but if you have the money to spend this is definitely the one I recommend out of all of them because it has such a wide range of colors finishes and different things like that so I really love this and then next is my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in Eden and I've used the um, Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion original before um, when it first not came out but when it first was in like the genie bottle and everything and I used it up or used it up as well as I could um, without having to depot it. I did depot it, but it didn't depot very well. So I picked up this one as a backup, and I love that it's a squeeze tube. That is a great idea. I'm glad they finally changed the packaging. It's really great. Um, and by the way, um, if you don't mind the other packaging, the UrbanDecay.com was selling. I'm not sure if they're still selling, but you can check it out. Um, selling the vintage vintage bottle potions for like eight or nine dollars which is half the price that you pay in store so check that out at urbandecay.com and I think they're also having their tattoos on sale for a dollar or two dollars or something so check that out there's always a great amount of sales going on at urbandecay.com if you check that out I'll put their link in the down bar um, but this I love this color now because it's matte and my lids get really 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 oily um, it doesn't I feel like it doesn't keep my eyeshadows as long lasting as the original did which is weird to me but it still works just as well I guess um, and I love this because it is so pigmented that it covers up all the discoloration on my lid so I don't have to wear eyeshadow um, if I'm feeling really lazy I'll just put this on in an eyeliner and I use it underneath my eyes as well and it works as a really great under eye concealer which sounds weird but I don't need a lot of under eye concealer and I don't like my under eye concealer to crease but this is a primer potion so it's not going to crease and it's a lot lighter than my skin tone right now so it acts as a lighter concealer underneath my eyes so I really love this um, I should have primer potion there's not a lot to say about it but it works just as well as the original I don't think it holds as long but it still is pretty great and then last but not least for eyes is my Benefit Bad Gal Lash um, Mascara. This is in black. And I was a little afraid, as I mentioned in my birthday haul, about the wand here. Um, the wand is humongous, but I've actually gotten 
used to it. You get used to it really quickly. And I really like this. I'm wearing it as my mascara right now. And I've been using it as my mascara every single day since I got it. Um, I really like this. I actually did not like it at first because I didn't think it was doing really anything that special for my lashes because I couldn't notice that big of a difference. But I was only using one coat and now I use two to three coats. And it actually works really, really well and it doesn't get clumpy. So I will bite. I might pick up the full size when I'm done with the little mini size here or I might just pick up another mini size because I don't know how the sizes compare and the money but um, the mini sizes lasted me a pretty long time so um, I will continue to use this and hopefully pick up the full size if I end up really liking it but I'm always on the search for a new good mascara if you guys know any good drugstore mascaras for volume and really 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 dark lashes I love my lashes to be really dark because I naturally have very blonde lashes, um, let me know and I will give it a try. So, there's that. It's a sort of big face category. I'm actually going to include lips in this because I only have two lip products this time around. Sorry about that. And um, some of these are new purchases. Some of them aren't, I think. Yeah, I only have two new purchases this time around for face. But I have a lot of new face favorites because of my two new purchases. So, the one new purchase that I have been obsessed with this month um, is my Maybelline Superstay Makeup um, 24 hour foundation and this is the Microflex formula or something um, and this is in True Beige and it has all this stuff on the back like withstands humidity, heat, sweat, non-transfer, flexible, breathable, all day comfort, oil free um, and commodogenic and it is suitable for all skin types. So I picked this up because I got a lot more tan for prom and I wanted to actually wear a full cover foundation for prom because I have been really sort of not loving my skin recently. Um, my skin is very odd. It has a lot of acne scars and although it doesn't have a lot of like big pimples or cystic acne or anything, I have tons of like little 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 acne that's impossible to get rid of on my forehead and down my nose um, and then on the side of my cheeks I have acne scars and underneath my chin I have acne scars so I have a lot of weird things in my face and then I have a lot of um, discoloration so I've always been afraid to try full face foundation because foundation sinks really easy into my smile lines and I have com like um, combination skin so it's hard to find a foundation that won't accentuate my dry spots but will keep my oily spots matte <laughs> so it's really odd for me to find a foundation but I actually really 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 love this um, it is really gorgeous and the finish is amazing um, it sort of finishes to a semi matte finish but once you set it with powder which is what I usually do it is basically full matte and the color matches me perfectly as well. Um, if you own this foundation, you know that it's one of its downfalls is it does not have a pump, just like the Revlon Color Stay. There is absolutely no pump to this, and it is around eleven dollars um, via CVS. So it's a bit expensive, um, but I don't think there's really any cheap drugstore foundations out there. It depends on where you get it as well. The only problem I have with this, um, which is sort of comical to me, is that it says no transfer on it, but this foundation transfers like crazy. This is a absolutely horrible foundation when it comes to transferring. Um, the formula and everything is great. This is amazing foundation, but it transfers really badly. If you have a sort of paranoia about transferring, I would not pick this up at all. Um, and it doesn't have any SPF in it either, which doesn't really bother me that much, but I would not pick this up if you're worried about transferring because it does transfer onto anything I touch. It even gets on my fingers when I touch my fingers to my face and that could be a result as me not setting it very well but even then if it says no transfer it should be expected that it doesn't transfer even without setting it because not everybody's going to set the foundation. So it does transfer um, especially near the end of the day once my powder's worn off. Usually if I keep my face fairly well powdered it doesn't transfer that bad but you have to be very, very, very careful what you touch with this foundation. Do not go hugging people that have white shirts or even black shirts or anything. Do not hug people or anything like that when you're wearing this shirt or at least be careful when you do because it will get everywhere on them. Um, and that's a bit of an embarrassment so please be careful if you're wearing this foundation. And I use about a quarter size amount because, um, I don't know, I just do. And this foundation is a bit thick but 
I feel like it's going to run out really quickly. You get the same amount of this as you get in the Revlon Color Stay. However, it's a bit thicker, so I think you have to use a little bit more, or it's a bit thinner or something. You have to use a bit more than you would of the Revlon Color Stay. So I don't like that idea because I use it every day, so I think it's going to run out fairly quickly. Um, and it is medium to full coverage. Actually, I want to say it's completely full coverage. The coverage on this is amazing. Um, with one layer, it covers everything on my face. If you had a bit of a worse skin condition than I did. You could use two layers buildable, but with one layer it completely covers everything, which is very impressive without looking cakey. This foundation never looks cakey, which I love. Um, and yeah, so I've been really obsessed with this. And then I have also been obsessed with my Physicians Formula Healthy Wear Powder. I don't know why, because I did mention in my last words video, or Hits and Misses video, that I hated this. Um, I actually don't hate it anymore, which is weird. This is the Physician Formula Healthy Wear SPF 50 Powder Foundation in Translucent Medium. And it looks like this. I actually use this as an everyday powder nowadays. Um, I lost a little puff to it, which is sad because I use that for touch-ups, but, um, I actually use this as an everyday powder, not over this foundation because I'm afraid it's going to make it too cakey. I use my e.l.f. HD powder to set that foundation, um, and I use my e.l.f. Um, powder brush to stipple it on but anyways um, I use this when I'm just wearing concealer and I will use this as a powder all over my face and I will use this for touch-ups during the day because it's, I can carry this around a lot easier than I can carry around a full bottle of foundation or something like that but I actually really like this it's not as cakey now that I've gotten it to work and also I've been using a lot more moisturizer on my face recently so it's really not that cakey anymore so I do like it um, a lot more now so that's interesting I thought I'd mention that and then I've also been totally obsessed with cream blushes this month. That's all I've been using on my cheeks. I have not used any powder blush on my cheeks at all this month, I don't think. The first blush, this is my everyday blush, and this is the blush I'm wearing right now, is the Sally Hansen Natural Beauty Inspired by Carmen D. Um, she used cream blush, and this is in bloom. And I've been using this in a lot of my videos recently. And I'm sorry, it looks really gross because it has, like, brush hairs in it because I use my stippling brush to apply it and... In my stippling brush sheds a little bit in it so it's fading a little bit um, but it is really 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 pretty and it's such a natural sort of rose color and it never looks like clownish it's not too bright it's not too dull and it's really pigmented so I love 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 this blush and I you can apply this with your fingers because it goes on really nicely um, and it melts really well but I prefer to just apply this with a stippling brush because it goes on um, really flawlessly when I apply it. And then the next one is my NYC Blushable Cream Stick. And this is in Wild Berry. And it looks like this. And I still have loads of product left in this. I actually got this last year. And I completely stopped using it just because, I don't know, I just stopped using it. You see how much product I have left in here? But this one is a lot more pink than the Bloom is. Um, but I really love this one. And I actually like the packaging because it comes out really easily and I can just use my fingers and I can also take this with me and touch up if I need to because it's so small. Um, this one melts a lot easier than the Bloom does so that's actually a good thing for me but if you like leave these blushes anywhere they're going or especially this one it's going to melt melt if you leave it in the heat so please be careful about that but it goes on really, really smoothly, and I love this. Of course, I don't apply this with my stippling brush because I can't stipple on the little tube, but I apply this with my fingers, or I dot it on with this, and then I smooth it out. Um, but I love this color as well. And then I've been obsessed with a highlighter this month, and I'm wearing this here as well and on my nose um, and down on my cupid's bow and chin um, and this is the Revlon Color Stay Mineral Finishing Powder in Brighton and I think I became obsessed with this because I used this on my sister I actually stopped using this for a really long time I've had this for a while now um, I stopped using this for a really long time and then I used it on my sister for prom um, because she loves this highlighter and I actually fell in love with it for myself again these have been compared to the MAC um, mineralized skin finishes I think and I can see why that is. They're sort of shaped the same way, and they're both mineral products. Um, and you both, they both come with about the same amount. Um, I think maybe the MAC one comes with a little more. I don't know. Um, you can look that up if you want to. But this one is in Brighton, and it's got a pink base with white and darker pink veins. However, even though it's pink, it definitely does not come off pink. Sometimes I actually use this as a blush, though, so I guess it does come off a little pink, but really not that noticeable. It just sort of has a 
pink tint rather than a yellow tint I think is the point um, but it's a very shimmery color and I love 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 this as a highlight um, I actually did not like highlight for a while because I thought it made me look oily or I thought it made me look too glittery um, but I actually really like this because it's not glittery it's sort of just a pearl and it goes on so that I just look really 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 glowy and I actually got a comment the other day someone told me how glowy my skin looked and I was like well foundation and highlighter so uh, I think that's what makes my skin look so amazing now that I've gotten my foundation routine down, I do plan on doing an updated foundation routine featuring all these new products, um, or all these new, new products, um, but I've been using the cream blush, which gives me a sort of dewy look, and the highlighter, as well as the foundation, which really gives me this overall glowy, natural look, so I really, really, really love this. And then last but not least is my e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set, and this has aloe, green tea, cucumber, vitamins A, C, and E, and it comes in a little bottle like this. Um, I got this just on a whim because I really wanted a makeup refreshing spray. I didn't really need one for setting or anything like that. But I use this when I'm done with my makeup in the morning and also like midday, um, which is really nice because it has been so hot recently. But I've been using this to mostly refresh my makeup. It's $3 from the studio line, and I really, really, really like this. Um, I don't recommend it as a setting spray, because I don't think it makes your makeup last any longer, but if it's hot where you live, or even, like, if you just want to refresh your makeup in the middle of the day or throughout the day, this is really, really, really nice. It basically works like it would, um, like, any sort of refreshing spray would. Um, I don't find anything special about it, because I have used refreshing sprays before, but I just really like this because it makes my face look less cakey and it also mattifies it a little bit which sounds weird that it's like less cakey but more matte however that's how it works and it makes it feel so cooling which I really love especially during this hot season um, but I have been using this every day and I still have like a lot left I've only used about this much to here um, and that's like every day for the past month so it does last a very long time especially for three dollars in such a tiny bottle so I do carry this with me everywhere I go and use it to refresh my makeup and then last but not least for sort of face even though these are lip products is my fresh sugar lip duo which I mixed in my birthday haul as well this was my birthday gift from Sephora and I'm actually going to go pick up the full size of these once I run out of these small sizes because these are really nice lip balms um, this is the sugar lip treatment in SPF 15 and this is the irregular one and I actually sort of want the lip exfoliant too and I still have a lot left but it smells so amazing it smells like lemons and sugar and it smells so 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 good it's not like an overpowering smell but it smells that you want to smell all the time I'm always like sniffing this which is really weird but I do and then I have the rose fresh which also has as 15 but this is the tinted one and this is like tinted red color and I'm wearing this on my lips today and I love this because it's like a Revlon lip butter where it gives you a good amount of color um, but it still acts as a really moisturizing lip balm. This is not as pigmented or as thick as the Revlon lip butters though if you want to know how they compare. Um, this is a lot lighter which I actually am more fond of because I don't feel it as much on my lips but I've been totally obsessed with those and then last but not least is skin and sort of miscellaneous things. Um, I'll put that all together. The first things I've gotten are new skin items. This one is the Clear Cell Ultra Acne and Marks Wash and Mask. And it's supposed to redu reduce like acne scars and also reduce acne. And I like that it comes with like two purposes. It's like a green sort of color and um, or like a pale green color. And you can use it as a mask, like a one minute, two minute mask. Um, or you can just put it on and rinse it off, which I like having those two options. I think that's really, really, really cool, and I think it does work a little bit differently um, when you use it as a wash versus a mask, but I don't have a preference over the other. I sort of do the mask every other night, and then between those, I wash my face regularly with this, but this makes my skin really soft. Um, it's almost like my... Um, Freeman Facial Clay Mask and Avocado and Oat Milk, so if you leave this on a little longer. Um, but that's what it reminds me of almost, and you guys know how much I love this. But this one makes my skin feel soft as well as helping my acne. It has 2% salicylic acid in it, so it does work with acne too. I think my skin has gotten a little better, but I've only been using these for about two weeks, so I can't give a sort of full fledged review on them. I just sort of wanted to mention them, and I will be doing a follow-up review on them. And then there's the Clear Cell Ultra Rapid Action Pads, and... These also have 2% salicylic acid in them, and they are like 
the Strydex that you guys, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know how obsessed I am with Strydex. Um, but they come in little pads like this, and I've already used um, quite a few, but I actually don't really like these, which is sad because I love Strydex so much. I don't like these because the padding is like really rough, which is strange. Um, it's not like going to exfoliate your skin. Um, I guess I'd like it a little bit more if it's like exfoliated. It just hurts. It's really painful. Um, I really don't like it. It's not super painful. I can handle it, but I don't like it because it's a bit painful and I don't like that at night. Um, and also the smell is so strong that it makes my eyes water. <laughs> and if I get it too close to my eyes, it makes my eyes burn. So the sort of things that are involved in this are too strong personally, but the actual product works fine, I guess. Once again, I haven't seen an improvement on my skin a lot, um, but I have not been using them for that long. So once again, there will be a follow-up. And then last but not least is my Nature Bounty Hair, Skin, and Nails Vitamins. These have 3,000 mcg of um, biotin or micrograms, and it's 60 coated caplets, and they are a dietary supplement, supplement but they are not for a diet. Um, and I got these from CVS just on a whim because I wanted to try them and my mom had heard they were good. Um, I have not finished this entire bottle because I haven't been taking them as regularly as I probably should. Um, they look like this by the way and I think they're about $10 per bottle but I got it on a buy one get one deal so I still have another full bottle to finish. I have not been taking these as regularly as I probably should just because I keep forgetting about it. But I will try and start taking them regularly and give you an update in like a month or two because um, they're said to work starting past a month but I haven't been using these the whole month um, so I really can't give a full review but I wanted to mention them for a follow up review and talk about them a little bit um, I think my hair has gotten a little bit healthier so that maybe a result is these but I don't know but they look oh gosh they look like this they are huge these are really big pills I guess they're not huge but they are they're fairly big for a person like me who cannot swallow pills um, and they smell horrible and they taste horrible. These are really bad. They're not coated. They say coated. I don't know how they consider these coated. Because you can taste it, but, um, yeah, they taste really bad. I usually break these in half and take them, but you have to take three at a time, um, or three, like, one with each meal. I actually was taking one with each meal, but I, since I do lunch at school, um, I usually take them three at a time at, like, night or in the morning. Um, so I don't really know how they work just yet, but I will do a full review on these at some point and let you know what I really think and whether they're worth it. Um, but I wanted to mention those. And then, and then last but not least is my hair extension, which I'm sure you guys are all wondering about. I did wear these prom night and then my prom outfit of the night. Um, so if you're wondering why my hair looks longer, that's why. And I usually curl these just because I don't think they completely look real if I wear this straight. But I haven't exactly tried a whole bunch of things with them yet. Um, I basically only tried curling and a braid, which looks really cute. Um, these are 14 inches, which is still really long and they are the Yaki Perm um, from Lovely Collection and I have mine in number two and I actually went to a store to get these and it was like a specialty store for hair extensions um, and the lady we told her that I wanted them I wanted them to get them for prom and we told her that I needed a color to match my hair color because I just dyed my hair and it was a dark brown color and I dyed it more natural because I want my roots to grow out um, without having to re-dye and also um, I wanted a natural color to match hair extensions, so I went up to her and asked her if she could match me, and she literally took like five seconds to go get the color for me, um, and it was really amazing because I got home, and they match perfectly to my hair. I don't know if you could tell via camera, but they match really, really, really well, and I've gotten loads of compliments on them every time I wear them, so I'm head over heels for these hair extensions. Um, they work well, and I did have to sew on the clips because they did not come with clips, but it doesn't, it's not that hard to sew on clips. Um, I have two layers in right now, so I use two layers every time I do my hair. Um, I don't think I could wear a third layer because my hair is really thin, um, and I don't want the clips to stick out, so I only do two layers, but you can see how long it is curled. It's like down to here. My normal hair cuts off about here when curled, like right above my shoulders or right below my shoulders. So I love these and I'm totally obsessed with them. I've been wearing them like all the time. And I did do like a messy sort of curled look today. It's pretty messy just because I didn't really curl it perfectly. But you can see my prom um, sort of out. But anyways, that's basically it. Um, and I think that's it. I wanted to mention my watch, but I don't have a lot of time left. Um, basically, I got this watch at Joann's 
fabrics um, a craft store, which is strange, and it was $10. But I've gotten so many compliments on it since I started wearing it. This is sort of a plasticky soft material, and then it's got diamonds around the head of the watch. Um, it's from Geneva or something, so um, I really love that. And I'm stacking it today with this bracelet, which is my friend's. So I have to give it back to her because I accidentally took it home with me and I thought it looked cute, so I put it on. Um, so shh, <laughs> I'll give it back. But anyways, um, so that's my jewelry today, and I have this one and these earrings. Um, but anyways, that's basically it. Um, once again, all of my links and everything that I mentioned in this video will be listed in the down bar down here. And also, I think that's it. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment, subscribe, send in any comments or requests or questions or anything that you have for me. Leave them in the comments and I will definitely get back to you. Um, and I will also be having a music favorites slash TV favorites video, a full blown one that'll take like 10 minutes, it'll be 10 minutes long, something around there. Um, also coming on this channel and on my vlog channel, which I will list down below as well, because that actually had a fairly good response on my last It's Misses, the music section. So that'll be on a separate video because I didn't want this video to be too long because I know it's already ridiculously long with all the favorites I had. And I will see you guys later.